everyone, you can call me Buster, and welcome to this tutorial for my redstone counter design. In this video, I'll show you how to build this little contraption right here. This is actually two of the counters right next to each other, for the purpose of having a ones digit as well as a tens digit. So let me go down here and show you how it works. As you can see, we have nine redstone lamps going up into the sky like this. So as you can see, there are eight of them lit up right now. That would mean that the counter is at 8, and then if we wanted to, we can make it go down, which will bring it down to 7, or we can hit the button to go up, which will bring it back up to 8. And then over here, we have what is the tens digit, at least that's what I'm calling it. This is one application of the design. So we have the ones digit going from 1 to 9, actually from 0 to 9, because as you can see, the contraption can go down to 0, and then back up to 9, so... That's a thing. Anyway, um, yeah, it goes from 1 to 9, and then this one goes from 10 to 9. You don't need to build two of them next to each other like this, but I feel like this is nice because it allows you to count up to 99 effectively. And if you built a third one next to it there, you could count up to 999. And if you built a fourth one, you could build up to 9,999, and so on and so forth. It's very nice. It's a tileable design that fits within a three-wide space here. It's a useful contraption for if you want to, say, count how many projects you've finished in your world, or for a YouTube series if you want to use it as a derp counter or something of the like. So let me go ahead and show you what materials you actually need to build this and how the actual contraption itself works. So as you can see here, this design works on the concept of using a comparator to read the output of a specific chest back here, and then we just take out and put in some stone shuffles, which can be any unstackable item, but I choose to use stone shuffles because they're easy to craft. Um, and then we just read the signal output from that chest and use the signal length to determine how many lamps are on in this system. So as you can see over here, I've built the same thing, mirrored on each side, but one block apart, so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, so the way this works is we keep these two hoppers both above and underneath the chest locked at all times using redstone torches to lock this one and another redstone torch here to lock that one. That prevents anything from changing when we don't want it to. Now if we go over here you'll notice we use observers. Now that's very important to this design because as you can see we're at one right now. If I hit down you'll see it will actually pulse twice because it pulses once when the button turns on and then a second time when it turns off, which creates a double pulse here. Um, now, it's actually an interesting little mechanic. It takes two non-stackable items to change uh, the signal length coming off of this here comparator. So if we were to say put in only one extra shovel, you'll notice it doesn't actually go up. However, if we put in a second extra shovel, it does go up and then it powers that lamp right there. So that's what we're doing with this. We're using this whenever it goes down. We let two out. And then of course the items go into this item elevator and simply go back into this chest for storage later. And if we make it go up, then it simply unpowers this dropper and allows two items in. And then it just goes up this little tower here with the slabs and then gets caught by a repeater each time and goes into the block which powers the redstone lamp. It's really quite simple in practice. And then as you can see here, we use simple uh, redstone lines, but when the two designs are right next to each other, you do have to do a little bit of finagling with uh, carrying the signal with comparators and stuff like that. It's not really a big deal, but just keep that in mind if you do want to make these tiled right next to each other. If you don't want to do that, you can always just put an extra block in between, and that makes it a little bit easier to deal with. You can see here in this shulker box the approximate amount of materials you'll need to build two of these things. If you only want to build one, you can pretty much have this number. Also, to note, these blocks of iron can be any solid block of your choice. This is just going to be your generic building block. As you can see, I chose to build mine out of the iron blocks just because they're a nice clean look. And also the glass is only for this little item elevator back here. It doesn't need to be glass. I just chose to make it glass because it looks cool. Um, other than that, these are the materials you'll need. You may want to add some more comparators if you want to build them next to each other. You may also need slightly less repeaters, but 
Better to be safe than sorry, I'd say maybe bring a stack of everything if you're going to build this in survival mode. Also, as far as the water buckets, I mean, you could use any other item elevator design for this. It doesn't necessarily have to be the water one, I just think it looks cooler. So that's, that's the idea behind that. You don't necessarily need the water, but if you'd like to build this particular design, you do need the soul sand and the water. So let's go ahead and build this design. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is actually build the outer facade of our counter. So go ahead and pick a spot, find the middle block that you like, let's say right here. Place a block right there, and then place two observers facing this away, just like that. Now you're going to want to build up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Go back here, place a temporary block right there if you'd like. Go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's very important that we get nine blocks up like this. And in fact, it's not really necessary for these blocks to be here. They could be here if you'd like. It could end up exposing a little bit of redstone if you do it that way. But I personally like the, uh, the indented design like this. So continue building up like so. And build a little arch like that. Place your buttons, whoops, I didn't go all the way down there, right there and right there, and that is your outer facade done. If you'd like now, you could add your signs on the outside here, or, I mean, you could go without the signs too, it doesn't matter. I do recommend having this here, though, to make sure everyone knows which one is up and which one is down. Um, it's very easy to forget. Now, onto the redstone. So around back here, the first thing you're going to want to do is place some blocks going up like this on either side just like so, not there. Make sure the block um, right behind each observer is not filled. Then we're going to go up behind the blocks like so, and then do one more line up behind the redstone lamps. Next we're going to go one, two, three blocks out like so, place, oh wait, I did that wrong, four blocks and then place your redstone comparator out right there, place two redstone dust and a repeater going into that block. Next we're actually going to knock out every other block like so, and this is so that we can get the slabs going. So let's place two slabs right here, place redstone up every other block like so, and just do it like this all the way up to the top. Okay, and once you have all of your redstone up to the top, go to the side ones, place redstone on these slabs right here, whoops, not that one, then switch to your repeater, place one on these blocks right here, then actually we don't need up here because that doesn't actually correspond to a redstone lamp. So what we're actually going to do now is simply place all of our repeaters like so, and this will make it so that the redstone lamps actually get power. Next we'll place a hopper right here and a hopper facing into it as well as a chest, hopper, and another chest on top of that, and we'll place a hopper facing into that chest right there. Now the next thing I actually need is this dropper right here. Set it facing upwards and then just make sure this hopper is actually pointing into that dropper. Then we're going to want uh, the soul sand here, place it right there, and then next we'll be dealing with some water, so we'll come back to that in a little bit. For now, let's move on to the actual up and down mechanisms. Alright, so for these circuits, you're going to want to place a redstone repeater, set that to two ticks, that's very important. If you don't do that, then it won't be able to change the state of any of the redstone torches we're about to place. Place one piece of redstone dust right here, two comparators like so, as well as a repeater right here running into a block with a redstone torch on top of that block and another block on top of that redstone torch. That's going to keep this hopper powered. The other side is also pretty much similar to what we just did. You want to place a redstone repeater set to two ticks going into any solid block. That goes into a redstone torch and then we're going to place two comparators right here leading into a repeater leading into a block which will keep this hopper powered. Now these don't necessarily need to be comparators, you can actually replace these with redstone dust. Just make sure there's uh, solid blocks right there to prevent these two lines from canoodling. Okay, so now that we have both of our hoppers locked, 
Go into this chest and place 18 of your non-stackable items inside of here, so that'll fill up two lines exactly. Stone shovels are good for this. Wooden shovels are also pretty nice because they're really easy to craft. Next, we want to go into both of these hoppers and place one of our items inside of here. That acts as a buffer, which means uh, the first time we push either of these buttons, it won't actually break. Next, let's go around here, go to the uh, dropper here. Let's make our redstone elevator. So place a block like so, up like that. Destroy this block and also place a block right there. Place a redstone dust on top of this block right next to the comparator. Place a redstone dust underneath that block. Place a redstone repeater right here, redstone dust here, and set that to subtract mode. Next thing, I'm going to grab this glass. Like I said at the beginning, this is not entirely necessary, but I like it just for the aesthetics. Place the glass going up here. Make sure absolutely there is no open space here. Okay, so now you're going to want to place water sources coming up here, here, and here. Uh, once again, make sure everything is closed up and then make sure this uh, goes over. Also very important that you cover up the top of this so that items don't go flying out. And this should be your system done, so let's test it out. As this is currently full, it'll be at nine, so if we push down, the items, two of them should drain out. They should come shooting out of here, and they did not come shooting out of here. Why, why is that? <laughs> uh, so this is why it's very important to make sure you don't push up when it's already full or down when it's already empty. As you can see, it emptied three out of here, and there's an extra one up here, and there isn't one in our buffer anymore. Um, that's not good. Let's fix that real quick. Now, that if, actually, let's make sure this is good too. Okay, good. There shouldn't be anything stuck in these hoppers either. So, looks good, everything is fine. Now, if you actually push the down button like you were supposed to... <laughs> so what happened there is I actually made a mistake, I'm sorry. The repeaters were supposed to be on this block and not on this block, okay? So when you build this up, make sure the repeaters are on this block because it's very important that we catch the signal as it comes up and then place a redstone dust facing into the block. So that should make everything work. As you can see, it's at eight, and indeed we are missing two. So if I push up, that should allow two back into the chest and make it go up. And if we make it go down, it should shoot two out, and then they will be held in this chest as this hopper is currently locked, and will be at eight. And if we hit down again, it'll shoot out two more. So we'll end up with four in here and we'll be at 7. If we hit up, it'll let two items back into the chest, like so, by turning off the hopper twice, letting two items out, and putting them into that chest. So there you are, you're completely done with your new counter. I apologize for being a little bit derpy in this episode. Um, I guess it's not really an episode, is it? It's a tutorial. Anyway, that's your working counter design. If you'd like to tile these next to each other, all you have to do is look at these right here. Make sure there's a comparator next to any redstone dust that is powered. Um, and if there's any redstone dust that is next to any other redstone dust that isn't supposed to be next to other redstone dust, simply place a block there to prevent it from canoodling with everything else, such as right here. That's a very important thing, and I just ruined this one by doing that. <laughs> Whoops. Anyway, that's your working uh, counter design. It's very nice. And as I say, you can build them next to each other to have a ones digit, tens digit, hundreds digit, and then you can count on and on and on with these things. Very nice. But uh, as you see, it's very important not to push up when it's already full, and it's important not to push down when it's completely empty, or else you'll mess with these buffers in here, and that'll cause the entire thing to break. If it does do so though, just make sure there's one in here, one in here, none in here, and 18 in here just like we did in the tutorial and you should be able to fix it just fine. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys ever so much for watching. Please remember to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe before you go. But until next time, goodbye everyone.